in our chapter on miscellaneous TLS topics, we now reached the second lesson in our mini-series of five covering various significant attacks that occurred on TLS. In this second lesson of the mini-series on TLS attacks, we will now look at the Lockheed 13 attack from the year 2013. Lockheed 13 is now a side channel attack on TLS versions 1.2 and lower, and a bit more specifically, Lockheed 13 is a time-based side channel attack that exposes a CBC padding oracle resulting from the use of a Mac to encrypt approach, which allows a man in the middle to fully decrypt the encrypted application data exchanged between a client and the server. Although self-admittedly more of a theoretical attack due to some very delicate time measuring involved, Lockheed 13 still needs to be taken serious and a first measure on how Lockheed 13 can be prevented is by disabling all cipher suites using the CBC block cipher mode of operation and by switching to cipher suites that make use of authenticated encryption with associated data ciphers such as AES behind the GCM or CCM block cipher mode of operation. Alternatively, Lockheed 13 can be prevented by switching from TLS 1.2 to TLS 1.3, as within TLS 1.3 all ciphers used or authenticated encryption with associated data ciphers and as such within TLS 1.3, neither the MAC to encrypt approach is used nor the CBC block cipher mode of operation. Having presented a short summary of the Lockheed 13 attack together with the mitigating measures that can be taken to prevent Lockheed 13, let's now have a closer look at how Lockheed 13 is really pulled off. Lucky 13 as an attack relies on TLS up to version 1.2 to use a MAC then encrypt approach, which is an instance of authenticated encryption used to simultaneously provide both confidentiality as well as authenticity to the application data exchanged between a client and the server. For this, the MAC then encrypt approach first wraps the plain text with an authenticity layer by calculating a MAC on the plain text and then encrypts both the plain text together with the just calculated MAC tag into a cipher text. Now, from the essentials of cryptography chapter earlier on in this course, we know that the preferred authenticated encryption approach is actually the so-called encrypted and MAC approach. Back in the Essentials of Cryptography chapter, I didn't provide an argument as to why the encrypted MAC approach is the preferred approach, but the argument for this is pretty much provided by the Lockheed 13 attack. Going back to explaining the Lockheed 13 attack, due to the CPC padding oracle attacks, it's well known that in case a system using or implementing the CBC block cipher mode of operation leaks a single bit of information about whether the CBC padding on a cipher text is correct or not, then the plain text behind the cipher text can be recovered. From this, it follows that the MAC to encrypt approach used within TLS is also not allowed to leak a single bit of information about whether the CPC padding on the ciphertext was correct or not. TLS 1.2 was then actually well aware of this and specified that in case an incorrect CPC padding is present, the implementation should assume a zero length padding and calculate the MAC anyway. The TLS 1.2 RFC 5246 then even mentions that this may leave a small timing channel, but that this timing channel was believed to not be large enough to exploit. Unfortunately, this was wrong and Lockheed 13 then demonstrated that the measures proposed by TLS 1.2 still allowed for such a side channel attack and the CBC padding oracle exposed by Lockheed 13 is shown in the graph on the left side of this slide. This CBC padding oracle exposed by a time-based side channel can then be used by a man in the middle attacker to recover the encrypted application data exchanged between a client and a server. 
Hats off to the researchers behind Lucky 13 to pull this off.